Brands on Brands. Hey, what's up, everybody? This week, we talk about how to name your podcast or your show, the things that matter for being found, for being relatable, and for really making the show your own. Check it out. In a world where content is king and your reputation is your brand, how do you build a brand that matters? Welcome to Brands on Brands, a home for those that think different and push their boundaries. This is where branding that matters lives. Now, here is your host, Brandon Berkmeyer. Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome to Brands on Brands. I'm Brandon Berkmeyer, your personal branding coach, and I believe that building a brand that matters today is the only way to thrive tomorrow. Appreciate you guys being here. Thank you for tuning in. Today's topic is how to name your podcast or how to name your show. We're focused on podcasting here because I know a lot of the listeners are in that space, but it could work for anyone that's creating a show out there. And what's important today, this is a solo show. We are diving deep on this topic. And what I want you guys to take away from this is that your podcast name or your show name is the first impression. It's your first impression. It's the first impression your audience is going to get of your show. It's the first thing that they're going to hear, that they're going to see when deciding if this show is for them, if the show that you built is what they are looking for today. It contributes to your findability within podcast players and within the show, the places where shows are housed. And also across the web, it determines your findability. Because if you're using the wrong words to describe your show and people don't know about your show, then they're not going to find you. So we're going to talk about some of that today. And also your show name is one of the most important decisions you can make when getting started because it contributes to your identity. It's what you become known for. So don't take those decisions lightly. Listen up today as we dive into it. Brands on Brands. All right, let's get started. By the way, for my new listeners out there, if you guys are interested in diving into your content and making more of it, not just creating, but repurposing, I do want to mention I have a quick free resource for you. It is how to convert your one hour of content into one month of content. For all the podcasters and content creators out there, I've created a step-by-step guide just for you, all about repurposing content. You can download it now at my free resources page at brandsonbrands.com forward slash resources. Go check that out. All right, let's get going. So category and keywords is where we're going to start. If you're talking about how to name your podcast, you always should be starting with the macro view of your category and your keywords. So think about it this way. If you want to understand your category, it's really figuring out which box do you fall in. And Apple Podcasts has a great categorization for you. They've already done all the work to figure out what are the main buckets of information that people tend to look for. And they put them into boxes for you. Categories like business, health, finance, they're all there already. And you pick which bucket do you want to play in? Because yes, most of our shows can be put into multiple buckets. But when someone's actually looking for your content, if they were going to go on a category search, where would they start? Think about that and pick something. And once you've picked that category, decide, okay, within that, is there a subcategory that I would fall into? Like within business, my show is within marketing. That is a subcategory of business. There's many subcategories of business. Entrepreneurship is a big one for podcasts. So there's a whole subcategory of that, but it all resides within business. So pick those subcategories. And why is this important for figuring out the name of your podcast? Well, because when you know where you are heading, then you know how to get there, right? So if my category is marketing within business, I now have to figure out what are the words that I can use to describe my show that help define it within this category. So think about it as when you've isolated your subcategory, say it was marketing for me, how do you fit into that space? What's your niche within that category? As you've identified that, you can build that into the name of your show as well. So if your show is all about Facebook ads within marketing, you can use the word Facebook ads in your title. It would have just called it the Facebook ad show. You can get more creative with that. And we'll talk about that later. 
but the main keyword should be included somewhere in the title. And you can either have it as part of the main title or as the subtitle. So for me, my show is called Brands on Brands, right? Pretty vague, but at least you know it's in the marketing category in that branding part of the marketing category. So I'm, I've slightly niched down. But if you go a step further, I've subtitled it, not just Brands on Brands, it's Brands on Brands dash personal branding and content marketing. Why is that important? It's important because now if someone is specifically looking not for any kind of branding, but for personal branding, for branding that builds their own self, where they are the business. It's the business of them, where their name matters. They might type in the word, the keyword, personal branding, and guess what pops up to the top? My show, because I've listed it in the title and also in the descriptions. That's what's important. So you can't just throw out a vague name like John Talks Today or John Talks Live or John's News because that is not going to help people find you. You know, maybe every Monday you go live and you're like, it's Mondays with John. That's fine, but no one's going to type in John. No one's going to type in Monday. No one's going to find you because of that. But if you called it Mondays with John dash Facebook ads and funnels, now you are helping the algorithm. You are helping the search tool tell the world what the show's about. That matters. If you miss that step, then you're not taking advantage of the functionality of search that's built into these tools. And not just the podcast tools, all of the tools. The same thing works for Google search when on your website. These titles will carry over to the blogs that you create. that will carry over to the YouTube shows that you create or the outputs into videos. And it all starts with the name of your show. So you have to get those keywords built into your, your name. The second thing, to help you guys go a little further, because I know it's hard to pick a name. You're like, well, I can, this is still kind of vague. It's just my name and Facebook ads. That's that's, that's not very specific. Okay. So let's get deeper. The second thing you can do, step one was categories and keywords, thinking about those things. Number two is figuring out what you stand for. And I'm going to call this your line in the sand. That's, I'm not the only one that calls it this, but that's what we're going to call it today. Your line in the sand. So categories and keywords. And number two is your line in the sand. Think about what you believe in that determines how you will own your corner, your niche, right? So for me, I start the shows off by saying, I believe that building a brand that matters today is the only way to thrive. I think your brand has to matter. You have to have some kind of connective tissue, some engaging experience. You have to touch each person individually and say, hey, what is it that you need? How can I help you? That's how I think you build a brand, one person at a time, one experience at a time. That's my corner. So for you, You have to determine what is it that you believe in that is what your audience needs to succeed or to benefit from this show. What is your approach to telling these stories and to finding the next level for your audience? And what this does is it positions you versus the other shows in your field. So I'm going to continue with my example of the Facebook ads show, right? If your show was Facebook ads by John, that's fine. People will know what it's about. But if you say Facebook ads based on deep research or something like that, then you know that this is a scientific type show, or if it's the science of Facebook ads by John or whatever, that is a very scientific type show. Whereas if it was a different way in, if it was copywriting for Facebook ads, you can picture that to be slightly different. And that's a different ownable niche. Or if it's building Facebook ads that convert you can tell there's a different approach to that. And each of these takes you down a different path and it might speak to what the common thread is that you bring into each show. Well, the questions you ask, the guests you bring on will all start to flow from this core premise, this line in the sand you've driven, you've drawn, which says, you know, there's lots of ways to build Facebook ads. The things that matter to me is how you write the copy. That stands out as your core belief. So when you bring on these guests, that's what you want to talk about. So all that goes into the name of your show, right? So you have to figure out what is the show about? What is my line in the sand? And how do I incorporate that? Can I bring that into the name? If not into the name, can I bring it into the subtitle or into at very least the description of the show right at the top? And that will help you get a a sense of like, what is it that I'm going to own in this space? It makes your show special. It answers that question. Why does this show exist? Because you're bringing a different perspective that is uniquely you in an area that you can own. 
Okay. So the third thing, the first one was categories and keywords. Second is line in the sand. The third is your, think about your audience first. It's audience first. So when I'm going into naming my podcast, I'm going to figure out what is it that my audience is looking for? What is it they're going to take away from this experience? Your audience matters, right? So the reason that that's important is when we build these shows, we are building them for someone. And if they are looking for something specific, you have to find a way to, to tap into that. And if you think about your audience first, you might either in your title, the name of your show, you might include the word that they, you think they're looking for the most, or you might actually name your audience. You might include what your audience calls themselves. So if your show is an, a show for entrepreneurs, you might include the word entrepreneurs in the title of your show. Facebook ads for entrepreneurs. It's very specific. Or it could be Facebook ads for musicians. Very specific. You could see how that show completely changes, right? And also gets much more niche down to a very specific audience that you can deliver directly to. Picking your audience is important, but including it in the name helps. So if it is, again, a title of that person, like maybe it's a corporate title, like CEOs or managers or entrepreneurs, or it could be something that is describing them overall, like for thrill seekers, for moms, for, you know, however you think that they would describe themselves, or if they were looking for other people's like them, what would they name that community? One of the top entrepreneur podcasts is called Entrepreneurs on Fire. It's right there in the name. And it's, you know, it's them trying to grow and scale their entrepreneurial businesses. And that leads to what they're all about. So what I would say is think about your audience and think about how you can catch their eye and tell them that this show is exactly for them. And it's by tapping into their identity, either who exactly they are, who, what they call themselves, or what they search for the most when looking for information that helps them. So if I'm looking for how to be a better entrepreneur, I'm typing in the word entrepreneur half the time so that I can find more things that help entrepreneurs. If I am trying to be a marketer or you know, be the leader in marketing, I'm going to type in marketing because I want to know what that is. Or I'm going to type in CMO or something like that to see how does this help? So you know, do they have shows that cater to me specifically? People that are in my shoes that maybe are ahead of me. So think about that. How do you bring your audience into the title of your show? And then you know, if you can either, if I want to twist it for you a second here, if you can either name the show to incorporate them or to invite them, that would be the way, the last way to look at that. You can either incorporate them or you can invite them. If you're not naming them specifically, name the thing that they're chasing. You know, name the thing that's like, this is Facebook ads for seven figure businesses. Maybe that's not them right now, but it's going to be them in the future. That's what they're aspiring to be. You know, if it's a fitness show, it could be, you know, the fit and fabulous life because they're aiming to be there, you know, whatever it might be. So you know, you either build something that they can aspire to or call them out specifically as, you know, I am you, you are me, this show is for you, let's do this. So think about your audience first. That's the last tip in terms of naming your show. And if those have helped, if you can go through that, if you can build in to your name of the podcast, you can make that strong first impression that your audience says, this show is exactly for me. It's what I've been looking for. That is going to make your show more findable so that the audience understands that you built this specifically for them. And if you've got a great podcast, guys, you don't have to do this alone. I know this is a lot. And this is sometimes you might feel like you have a good idea, but you just need a gut check. If you have a great podcast idea and you aren't sure what to name it, reach out to me. That's why I'm here. Let's chat. I'd love to hear from you. I like to talk to my audience. Just go to brandsonbrands.com forward slash coach. And my schedule's right there. You pick a time and we'll chat. That's what I got for you guys today. If you enjoyed the show, thank you for listening. First and foremost, take a screen grab, tag me on Instagram at Brandon Berkmeyer. And remember, building your brand is a journey. Tackle little items, little steps each day and move forward. Hope these tactics shared today were helpful. And thank you. Thank you so much for listening. I will catch you all next time. You've just taken your marketing knowledge to another level with this episode of Brands on Brands. But we have plenty more ways to help you build a brand that matters. Head over to BrandsOnBrands.com for resources, as well as access to our blogs, videos, and exclusive coaching sessions with your host. Be sure to visit BrandsOnBrands.com.